Today we're looking at Abraham. Abraham the father of faith. That is what the Bible says. Abraham the father of faith. Yeah. So for the next few months that I'll be coming, um, I know I'm already scheduled. Uh, now to August. Um, and in the next few months I'll be coming, I intend to do my own ministry. And it's going to be titled Example for People Who Walk with God. Okay? Example for People Who Walk with God. And we're going to be looking at um, major Bible characters, some in the Old Testament, others in the New Testament. Uh, today we'll begin with Abraham. Um, and we're going to focus on this important character or quality that Abraham is known for, and that is faith. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word, and we thank you for the works that you have done in the world through people in the past. And thank you, O oh God, that these things are written for us in your word so that we can learn from their example. And if we, as we look at these lives, we pray that your spirit will open our eyes to see wonderful things in your word. I pray, O oh God, that your word will come to us all as life and spirit. I pray for understanding, for clarity, and for the grace the willingness to obey your word. In Jesus' name we do. Amen. All right. Abraham, the father of faith. The passage we just read presents to us this encounter between Abraham and God. Um, at this point, it has been 10 years since God told this man Abraham, that was his original name, uh, before he was later called Abraham, by God, but God changed his name to Abraham. But 10 years before this happened, before the event of this event, God called Abraham and gave him some promise. We read that in Genesis chapter 12. God told him there that I will make you a great nation. But 10 years later, after that first thought, Abraham still didn't have one child. That is the person God promised to become a nation. Ten years after his he still didn't have a child. And so we asked the person, what is going on? From this story, from the story of Abraham, from the life of Abraham, I think we can learn this truth that faith is an indispensable virtue when it comes to walking with God. You cannot walk with God without faith. If you don't have faith, if you don't hold on to faith, if you don't lead by faith, constantly and intentionally, you're going to go your own way, and God is going to be on his own way. But if you want to be in God's way, you are going to need faith. See again, it is indispensable. You can't do with it. It's not an option. And so the question is what? Why is faith an indispensable urge when it comes to walking with God? Well, I have just one answer. And that's the answer we'll just keep seeing in the event of Abraham's life. What's the one is? The answer is because God will keep you waiting. Hmm? 
why is faith an indispensable virtue when it comes to walking with God? Answer, because God will keep you with you. So, like we just saw, here in chapter 15, Abraham was now 85 years old. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he was 75 years old. And God said to him, leave your father's house, leave your country, leave your people, get out of your own identity. I am going to make you into a new person. I am going to give you a new identity. You will be the father of a nation of people. Multitudes of people will come out of you. Mighty men and a woman will come out of you. So get to this place and go to the place I'm going to show you. At that point, God didn't tell him where. And that was the moment Abraham's faith began. Now, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, he says this. So faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of Christ. It comes by hearing, hearing the word of Christ, hearing the word of God. Everything faith started or began when God spoke to him and said, Be this. Abraham, he believed. He set out in faith. He stepped out to this place he's never, he's never been to, this place he's never seen, and just followed God, leading God, guided to go and see this place. And you see, God is still doing things today. For you, all of us who are here this morning, God's word is speaking to us, and God is calling you on this journey of faith. That every step of your life is supposed to be a faith comes by hearing. So the question is, what do you hear? Who do you listen to? What do we hear from God's word? What is God telling us in his word? You see, this is, this is the reason Christian has to stay in scripture. Because the, the more you stay in the instruction, the more you God, the more your faith grows. Because that's how faith comes. Okay? Faith comes by hearing God. So, at, six, at 65, his wife, um, no, at 75, sorry. At 75, his wife, Sarah, Sarai at this time, was 65. God said to them, go out. It will make you a great name. So they left. They believed God. And now we come to chapter 15 where we can pray. He has been 10 years. Abraham was now in the land of Canaan where God had taken him. And he was waiting for God to fulfill the promise of making him a great nation. But after 10 years, he has come. God comes to him and says to him, Abraham, and your shield, your be very great. Then look at verse 2. But Abraham said, Oh Lord God, what will you be doing? For I can see Abraham is justified in questioning God. If I promise you something, and after 10 years, I've not given you that thing I promised you, <laughs> and I still come to you after 10 years and I say, you know what? I didn't want to give you that thing. Will you continue to believe me? I have been in that situation. Uh, there was a time I had a very old car. This was back in the junior. I had a very old 
Because look at verse 6, right? Verse 6 tells us, and he that is in the ground to lead the Lord, and he knows God, who is the ground at the You see, that is what leading God. But in the case of Abraham here, it's not some kind of works, purity, and obeying some commandments. No, it is just the act of believing. He believes God. And though at this point he didn't listen anymore, he was now 85 years old. His wife was now 75 years old. Where in the world? People at this age, you don't think it's already bad enough. No, God is not done with keeping Abraham waiting. Because the next thing that happens in the story of Abraham is his wife, Sarah, Sarah was the stuff. Like, you know, just, um, don't think the air will come from you, Abraham. But maybe not me, Sarai. So you know what we're going to do? I am barren. I cannot give birth to children. Sarai now suggests her to Abraham. Here is my female servant, Abraham. Have a child with her. This is a practice in ancient times. Okay, it was normal practice. Um, they don't do that, but but that was normal practice then. Um, have a child through her. It would be my child, but only through my servant. And Abraham, unfortunately, didn't say no to his wife. Um, it's probably normal. Yeah, this is this is how we think about it. They had a child and they named him Ishmael. Um, Abraham was now 86 years old. Um, and then God shows up again to Abraham. I, I don't know why God does this. But, you know, God can get God can get Okay? Because God can get Abraham. Um, so we, we read chapter 15, right? In chapter 16 was when you know he listened to his wife arrive and they got eight miles. So chapter 15, God now shows up again to Abraham and he says to him, um, let me read what one to four. Listen to what one to four. Uh, Genesis chapter 17, you can just turn to 17. But one to four, when Abraham was not dead, he was old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will break. Praise your Lord. Let's What did God do? Before we are sure. God is reassuring Abraham of his promise. He was 75 years old when the promise was first made. Now he was 99 years old. We're talking about 34 years down the road. God is saying his work has not changed. His promise has not changed. The promise has remained the same. You see, God is my world will never change. Never change the world. But God's world never changed. He was he said he was seven the same from 24 years ago. We are short. But then look at verse 4. No, verse 3 verse. Abraham fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. Now, well, who will be the rest of the past? But here's something that you need to know from that place. 
The Bible tells us here that Abraham laughed. He laughed when he when he fell face down, he laughed. He laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Oh God. This is this is now becoming a joke. Right? When do you laugh? When someone tells a joke, right? Uh, when something is funny. And Abraham was like, this is not funny, God. <laughs> I'm gonna have a I'm 99. Sarah is now 89. We're done. At this point, Abraham had reached where I reached. Two years after after the, the prodigal happened. He he had written it down. And then he brought up a new negotiator. First he was thinking, and he asked me there. His tech or chief family will inherit um, his household. There was a new person in the negotiation process. So in chapter 17, Abraham said to God, and let's go, let's in reference. This, this covenant you have with me, I belong to Israel. Let it be the matter of nature. At least now I have a son. Okay? It's not a thief. This is a servant. No, this one is from my own body. What did God say? Again, no way. Think his own way. It's not your own way. It's not my own way. It's not the world's way. It's not the American way. It's not the Chinese way. It's not the Nigerian way. It is God's way. It is either God's way or no way. So he said to Abraham here, no way. It is not my original way. We are going to stick to my the problem for Abraham is he is finding it difficult to keep up with God's time. And we all do that when we are struggling to keep up with God's time, we come up with our ways of doing this. And we want God. To fall in line <laughs> with our ways. But God wants us to pay attention to His word rather than pay attention to the world around us. What did God say? So God said, God said to Abraham, You're going to have a son with Sarah. That is very specific. Not the word. The child of promise is going to come to us. One year later, um, Sarah will actually give birth to this son Isaac. But not before God can appear to Abraham and Sarah in chapter 18 of them. So if you look at that whole <laughs> set, right? Genesis chapter 12 was the first call, Genesis 18 was where we read. Um, then Genesis 17, God shows up. Genesis 18, God comes again to Abraham. And this time around, he does not talk only to Abraham. He says, What? And God spoke to Sarah too and said, You come to give birth to a son for Abraham. This is where Sarah also laughed. Abraham laughed in chapter 17. Sarah laughed in chapter 18. Sarah said, No, 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 this is, this is not a joke. And God says, is there anything too difficult for me to do? Why? Why do you know? Why are you believing the time? You guys have come to the field. And the silence is just this is not wrong. The silence is not a lesson. 
He does that. God is bigger than the sun. Is there anything too difficult for me to do? That is what God says to God. Says, my dead son, next week, we are going to. So the following year, like I said, Sarah now gives to a son at the age of 90. Abraham was now one. He is old. I heard what someone said. He said, when God wants to do something good, he waits when it is difficult. But when God wants to do something great, he waits when it is easy. Thank you. And that was what God did in the life of Jesus. He was in And that was God. Right? <laughs> How was God not? This was not a time that nothing was humanly done. In God, she did. You know the meaning of the name they gave the son? Um, you know, because Abraham's son is Isaac. And the meaning of Isaac is he loves or love or she loves. Why? Because Abraham loves in chapter 17, Sarah loves in chapter 18, and God gives us the name for the son, he loves. <laughs> but you see, it has this ironic meaning. Yeah, it can mean yeah, they love. So we have a son who bears that mean, but Sarah captured the sense of joy that comes with the miracle. She said, God has put love in my life. And everyone who hears about this will love this thing. God is still in this business of putting laughter in the mouth of people. People who are People who are depressed, people who are in sorrow, people who are in the midst of problems and anguish. God sent his life into the life of God. And God is still calling people to trust in him, to believe in him. God wants you to go through that problem in your life. That has taken laughter out of your Because through faith, God is able to put laughter in your mouth. And this is why Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 to 5 tells us trust, no, chapter. Uh, Proverbs 5 verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths. In the Lord, believe in him, have faith in him. Um, and then we read. In the opening, uh, opening scripture, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2. That's what faith is. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the certainty of things not yet seen. Things that we have not seen, things we are only hoping to come, things we are only believing God for, that we continue to hope. Continue to be sure. God. And verse 2 tells us that this is how the people of old were commended. The people who were praised in scripture, they were commended because they believed in God. They trusted the Lord in all their ways. They did not set their faith at and trust them in, the, in themselves. And they did this. Let me know with all of them. Lean not 
on your own understanding. Your own understanding. Your own smart ways of getting things, right? The book of Hebrews still in chapter 11. Um, again, tells us that we are saying that without faith, it is impossible. No one can please God if not you are like it. It is so easy as Christians to come to a place where there's no difference how we live and the way people who have no faith live. Um, we all live by our own strength. We all live by our own plans. We all live by our own strategies, whether it has to do with our mental health, financial health, physical health, um, spiritual health. And God is calling us today and reminding us to we and I in your day to day life. Where, where is God? Where? Let's get back into your story. So if you look at the total number of years, Abraham waited for God. It's 20,000 years. Without faith. 25 years. God will always keep you waiting. My encouragement to you today is keep believing. Keep believing. It is difficult. Never give up on God. Because God never gives up on you. Amen. Amen. Amen.